Good morning to one and all present here. My name is S.G. Gopi and I belong to the 1987 batch chemical engineering. Before I further continue with the event, I would like to thank you all for coming here today. It not only shows your interest in the betterment of AABN, but also a dedication to learning new things. I would like to thank our core committee members of AABN for arranging this webinar. Today marks the 51st webinar of AABN and I'm really honored to host this webinar. Before we get started, I would like to appreciate all the people who have contributed to making this webinar possible every week. The first webinar was held one year ago and AABN has come a long way now after 50 webinars. We have around 4,200 plus participants from all over the globe. AABN has seen immense success in the last 50 weeks and it was all possible because of the dedication shown by the core committee members. This weekly webinar is not a mere webinar that AABN arranges every week, but it has transcended itself to a festival where entrepreneurs from different domains interact with each other and share their knowledge, failure and successes and try to learn from each other and apply it for the betterment of the company. Entrepreneurship is a major feature of the Indian economic landscape. Entrepreneurship is more than just an engine of economic growth. It is also a factor that makes communities more vibrant, inclusive and secure. Mr. CK Ranganathan highlighted during his speech address, during his special address at AABN's 50th, 50th webinar last week, entrepreneurship transformative properties when he noted that it is the ability to turn an idea into reality, a new venture, a small business that puts rising economies on the path to prosperity and empowers people to come together and tackle our most pressing global pro problems from climate change to poverty. These are but some of the reasons that we are so excited about entrepreneurship and are doing what we can to promote it worldwide among our entrepreneurs. The way metro rail projects across the country has been, transform has been transforming cities, brings in technology and makes commuting easier. Metro rail sector has become a linchpin for progress and infrastructure development in India. The Indian metro rail journey started with Kolkata and then moved, moved on to other parts of the country. Then came DMRC and one of the most successful metro rail in the country was constructed. Today, I believe they are advising others on methodology. Now, every city wants to have a metro rail. From them, it's a sign of progress. Metro rail projects are expensive and lab laborious. Moreover, most metros are not making profit. One should not exactly count the benefits of the metro rail with the balance sheet of the company. Instead, people should look at the economic benefits it brings to that city. There is also the situation where one must consider making these projects sustainable. The digital transformation in, in construction has just began to happen. Several global Solution providers in the construction segment have technology for metro rail projects today, which are driving a whole lot of construction activities. Every, everyone has their own process, but a metro rail project has multiple stakeholders. How can one work efficiently and stay on the same page when people from different cities and countries are involved? The softwares are so accurate that what is constructed virtually is exactly what you will get when the final project is done. Today, we have one great personality, Mr. D. Bashiam, a respected professional and a visionary what makes him an apt choice for this audience is that he too is an alumnus of Anamala University and he belongs to the 1970s batch civil engineering. I have the pleasant duty of welcoming and introducing him today at Igniting Ideas, Opportunities in Metro Rail Project and Interactive Business Networking Session. Mr. D. Bashiam is a 76th batch chemical engineering graduate from Anamala University. He has more than 40 years of opulent experience in construction of infrastructure projects, building projects and power projects in domestic and international. Arena, worked in some of the leading construction companies in India, such as Gammon India Limited, Larson and Tubro, Island FS Engineering, NCC Limited in India, and Monsell Consulting and ETA Power Projects in Dubai. His present role as project management consulting, mentoring, coaching, and training while handling his organization, Prementus, his milestone reached that he provided consulting services to landmark flyover projects, metro rail projects in Chennai and Indoor flyover projects in Sri Lanka, MSME training center, etc. Besides holding training and certification on FIDIC contract conditions and Primavera software at Dubai, training on CPM PERT at NITIE Mumbai, and training on concrete mix design at CRA Delhi. His membership in, uh, his membership <clears throat> in member of, uh, in member institution of engineers, member in Indian Concrete Institute, PMP, and Guild of Project Control. During this webinar, you'll acquire up-to-date information on the status of CMRL phase two implementation 
as well as recommendations to accelerate transformative change. You will have a unique opportunity to exchange views, share experiences, and identify common strategies to integrate and to scale up the resources. It is my hope that you will take advantage of, the, of this opportunity to come up with valuable recommendations and conclusions that will be beneficial to our entrepreneurs as a whole. I look forward to open and constructive debates and wish you all the, a most successful webinar. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Vashem. Thank you, Mr. Gobi, for the introductions. So I will start the presentation. I hope you are able to see the screen. Yes, sir. It's visible clearly. Good morning to everyone. So most of you would have traveled in Metro Rail and felt the difference over the other metro, or sorry, other mode of transport available in every city. So let us look at the comments or the feedback registered in social media, one of the social media by the frequent travelers. The writer says, it's a nice experience, better than taking a cab or train. And he says it is cheaper. But he traveled from airport to Nagar and he says it is very cheaper. And metro frequency also like 15 minutes. And the authority allow 15 kg of baggage inside the train. And he has also appreciated about the availability of lifts and escalators, not to climb in the staircase or anything. So other reader says, other reader says that this must have been built 10 years back. Anyway, better than never. And he says the station is maintained cleanly, the trains are maintained cleanly, and more important is the air conditions are working well. But of course, he mentions cost of the travel is high, but once the whole network is built, public will be having opportunity to travel across the Chennai very quickly. So definitely, public are satisfied. Of course, a couple of issues are there, like ticket fare, what they're mentioning, and connectivity. So as Mr. Gobi, Gobi was mentioning about the ticket fare, so the benefits sometimes, when we give it to public, it may cost more to the government, and government is also doing the best Last time they reduced the ticket fare. And second issue is connectivity, end-to-end -end connectivity. Somebody gets down from the metro, they have to switch out to other mode of travel to go nearby, their house or office. So that also, I think Chennai Metro Rail has initiated. The air condition, the share autos, and there are so many other things further in the pipeline. So this means, the Metro Rail project is one of the most successful projects ever carried out in India. And the credit goes to policy makers, government officers who are sitting in the highest post, political leaders holding the highest post in the central government as well as state government. Coming to the technical side, design consultant, project management consultant, supervisory consultants. In any metro project, you will be having so many consultants. Even when you start the project, they engage a consultant for DPR, detailed project report, like they are going to do for Madurai. So consultants also plays a big role and they be they contribute a lot. Then Indian construction companies, I mean the contractors. 
it, the list is the list of the Indian construction companies participating in metro rail projects. Year on year, the list is increasing, and that is a good trend. Then projects are also increasing every city all over the India. They match us, but still there is a gap, and now foreign companies are also entering, and they make a joint venture to the with the companies established in India. Engineers and workers, they are very important people because they work at the field, they toil, they work day and night on public holidays. So their contribution is in all respects or much more. And last in the list is subcontractors vendors. So the subcontract vendors, it is, I put it in the end of the list, but on the end of the day, you will see their contribution is making a great impact on the completion of the project that is within the stipulated time and within the budget. So present scenario, in Chennai Metro, these people or these agencies are going to play a bigger role. Why I'm only specifying subcontractors? Why not Indian companies? Why not you become a, we become a consult big companies, consultants? Yes, it is possible for the future projects. Now coming to Chennai project, it is already approved by government of India and Chennai Metro Rail working day and night to issue the tenders and issue the award of contracts. So I think there's a better chance for subcontractors and they get a great business opportunity. So in order to understand the business opportunities for these subcontractors or vendors, we need to go a little deeper into the subject on how CMRL is executing the project, what are the components of the structure that is metro rail concrete structures or underground structures and how construction is taking place this may throw light to the people who want to do business and of course i am going to add the list i i highlighted the separate list also but people who are ready to catch along the presentation also they will be able to catch it Now coming to the bigger picture of the Chennai Metro Rail project, I'm taking only South India. Because when you say business opportunities for us, with all these places are nearby. And this table is uh, one thing, interesting thing is showing. The total length of Bangalore Metro and Chennai Metro, if you add it, it will be almost same. Chennai Metro Rail is little more by one kilometer. That is one. Second, for business opportunity point of view, the approved new route is 118.9, which is very big figure compared to other metros carried out or approved our other states like Bangalore, I mean, Karnataka or Telangana or Kerala. So what it indicates, this 118.9 kilometer going to be completed as the target has been put by CMRL and uh, government of Tamil Nadu in five years. That means work has to go simultaneously. If work has to go simultaneously, in 10 stages, 12 stages, whatever you are having at vendors or subcontractors, they need not serve for all the stages. That means you need more vendors, more subcontractors. So great opportunity is thrown over. So I'll just briefly about this. Everybody knows about CMRL and it's a joint venture of government of India and government of Tamil Nadu. 
with equity holding, equal equity holding. It was incorporated on 2007 and construction phase started in 2009. And you would have known that first operations started in June 2015. That is from the date of incorporation to the date of commissioning of the first train route, eight years. And these eight years are only New Delhi also taken place. And New Delhi, one of the fastest track record, and CMRL is really catching up faster. Though we have to increase the network, and which, of course, there is a plan for Madurai and Coimbatore. Let us go in detail into the stretches, how they divide the stretches. They call it as the corridors. We will also look at the map, which will have different colors. But in the table, you will see the length properly. So corridor, they say corridor 3, C3, corridor 4, corridor 5. And each corridor has a mixture of type of structures, elevated, underground. So underground stretches comes always in the stretch where work is carried out or the stretches coming in the heart of the city or middle of the city, or the road is narrow. So you notice that 26.7 kilometer in Madhavaram, on the road, because that is coming from this T Nagar, Nongambakam, Paramani, like that. At the same time, corridor 4, 16 kilometer elevated, 10 kilometer underground. But this 16 kilometer is on the Arkad Road. Arkad Road is one of the narrowest roads, very high tra traffic, road width is less. And in this, it is designed as elevated. That is the biggest challenge. Another challenge is Corridor 3 passes over the Corridor 4 for a certain length of around 6 kilometer. It's like a two tire. Because Chennai, Whatever you are seeing, phase one, in this stretch it will look different. Train above the train. So, as I have told, already it's a narrow road and it will be a taller structure. Next, Madhavaram to Sholing and Angur. Elevated is 41 kilometer. This somewhat, you can understand that it is also traveling in the suburban areas, out, outside the city areas. So, total length. Is 118.9 kilometer, which has been approved, and CMRL is going to execute the project, and they want to complete it in five years. And along the route, stations are also there. This table will tell you that how many stations are there in each corridor, and total 128 stations. So compared to elevated, station works is like a buildings where there are a lot of building materials are involved. So it's just like any other commercial building. So like finishes, floors, paints, everything will come. So there is a bigger scope for the vendors who can supply these products to the specification given by the CMRL. Big opportunity for the trading also. We saw that 118 kilometers they are going to build. So where from they, they get fund? All metros are, of course, funded by international agencies. And once the cell government gives approval, the state governments start talking with the government agencies. And here, according to the CMRL website, 52 kilometer is Jika, that is a Japan International Cooperation Agency. And 66 is the major length, major stretch length, ADB, Asian Development Bank, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, New Development Bank. All these banks are going to support CMR alignment the Tamil Nadu government, and funding is already tied up. 
and you will notice that the tenny tender issued by CMRL. In one place, all these details will be mentioned because that is an importance given by a FIDIC. FIDIC says that the owner should tell to the bidder that how he is going to fund the project, whether it is lined up, whether it is already in the pipeline. So all these are available in the tender. And total project outlay is 69,180 crore. Now this includes the land acquisition cost also. As I told that, whatever we saw in a corridor, how much land, this uh, picture also available, I mean the map. So you will see that uh, east side, west side. Though they name it as a corridor three and five, but you can always say east direction, west directions. So I was telling that, the corridor is going parallel with the another corridor. That is the stage between Alvar, Trinagar, and Kuru. So that means the corridor, which is starting from Madhavaram, going to Sholinganado, will pass through Alvar, Trinagar, and Kuru, and turns back. Hands left. At the same time, Another corridor comes from Lighthouse to Poonamalli and these locations, as I mentioned, Dalvatri to Porur, it will be like a two time. So the structure is designed like that. So otherwise, the map will clearly tell each location of the stands, stations and uh, it is all well planned, everything is finalized. So the map is also available in the public domain. And the length is also given here. So, Payambuth Metro is also almost coming I mean, nearer to the execution, I mean, uh, the tender stage. Probably, of course, after tying up the fund. So, we don't have much details about this in public domain. But there are four corridors of 136 kilometers at this spot information, unofficial information we got. But of course, this has to be ascertained. So, but what we see is, Vayambutur Metro is yet to start, even yet to design. So, business opportunities here is there for all kind of, even the consultant, main contractors, vendors, and those who have great experience on this, as a subcontractor, they have an ego tomorrow, they can tie up with the main contractor. So another city is Madurai. This is also recently announced by government of Tamil Nadu. I think it is announced in budget also. Definitely this is going to come up. And Madurai is having already landmarks like AMS, for India Institute of Medical Science. And this is going to add another feather in the Madurai. So this map also, we are not having officially, but probably once DPR is out and put in the public domain, people can see it. So here also it is written as a phase one, phase two. I want to just go through the execution philosophy. Those, most of the people will be knowing it, all the government tenders are done like this. So compared to phase, there is a difference, but between the CMRL that in phase one, it was executed like this. Most of the stretches are designed by contractors. It is included in the bid cost. But here, the design is done by detailed design consultant. So that means the first agency who comes into the picture is detailed design consultant. And they prepare drawings, DOQ, etc., and give that to CMRL. So they invite tender. And uh, like other government projects, major projects, it is a two cover system, technical and financial. So bidder must bid with the two cover system, and technical bid is opened. And then after the evaluation, you get the price bid opening. So once whoever gets the L1, they get the LOA. 
So it is actually, as I told, the subcontractor will be approaching, will be able to approach the person who receives LOA. And this bid, uh, that uh, successful tender, that is a contractor, will again pass through any subcontractor he wants to appoint from down to up. Like he will give it to the consultant for approval, pre qualification procedures, evaluation. And once the subcontractor is approved, he also comes at the port. So that forms the reverse. The same thing for the material also. Though material, some materials are already given available in the tender document, these are the material, or equivalent means you can choose such materials and submit for the approval. And again, another exhibition methodology we are mentioning is about the, how the packages are divided. The packages on one, two, three is uh, mostly 99% all civil works only. So viaduct always now it is included in the station along with the stations, but underground and stations probably it is separated. So all, all the tender comes, you will come to know about it. And depot is there. I think presently Unamali and Madhavaram. One more depot also they are planning. So one, two, three is civil works. Tracks, we can say civil works are very minor, but mostly mechanical, laying the rails with the advanced mission, advanced system of building. That is another package. So other all other packages, though I mentioned in the separate, how they will be clapped or Further separation will be there. We are able to see that. But yes, we know these are the area or discipline where business opportunity can be explored. MEP, mechanical, electrical, firefighting is again a mechanical field. Ventilation and air conditioning, it is more applicable only for underground because elevated open station, you don't need all these things. Only one or two air conditioner for the system room. Then signaling and telecommunication, platform screen door, it is coming in the underground. Then the traction, OHT. Then automatic fare collections. This is a sophisticated equipment where there is a gate. Once you buy a ticket, the gate allows you to be inside. So lifts and escalator, it is also separately, bit is there and this lift and escalator vendor, once he wins the contract, he will coordinate with the civil contractor and of course MEP for his further work like insulation. So these are the major list. Maybe some minor items may will be there, but these are the major items. So where we stand at present. Four packages have been awarded. Two in underground, two in elevated. So I was telling about that uh, very important corridor, powerhouse to poor road, where road is narrow, traffic congestion. Again, certain change will be too tired. So you will notice that there is a first tender has been finalized and it is awarded to Larson and Dobro. And next is Poru to Punamalli, both are corridor four. And that is given to Hindustan Construction Company, this is a major company based in Bombay. Then other transmission, there are cases of specialized in transmission line. And they are also joint venture and they have got this job. So people would have noticed that. Those who traveled in Dharka Road and further to Bangalore via Ramachandra Hospital, there is a visibility. The construction work is going in a full swing by KEC. And of course, last night, Tobro, they are uh, waiting for the traffic diversion. That's the biggest challenge. And uh, every day, the media is also covering the trial mock-up traffic diversion, etc. going on. So this is the present strategy of package is awarded. And uh, work-wise, underground. So initial works are already taking place, like uh, submissions, detailed uh, 
review of the design, etc., is going on. So this is a picture for the status, project status. Now coming to, I will skip it after I'll come. So as I told, people or the agencies who want to do their business or explore the opportunities, will have to understand how, what are the components of the structure and how it is executed. Here I am seeing a section of a single peer, we call it as a peer or column, and series of columns and more that only the superstructure is erected and in the track is laid and trains goes on the track. Here you see the first work, visibly you are seeing piles, but since it is constructed in urban area, any work going below ground level, you need to identify utilities. And those utilities, if at all clashing with the, these piles and pile cap, they need to be diverted. And this task cannot be done by contractor alone. Though all the utilities available across the stage, it is already mapped given in the tender. The contract has ensured by doing trial pits and visibly see what utilities are there. Then he will give the drawings to the agencies, respective owners of the utilities. And CMRL is a nodal point and they got also people engaged of respective departments and they are also supporting the contractor. And contractors, he follows continuously with the agencies and the process is a little bit lengthy, but he has to follow the procedure correctly, then he will be successful. But it is a challenge at present. And a lot of uh, places, the work is delayed because of this. So here, you can see that there are no, this is only my personal opinion, Single window clearance, such type thing, is not available. You have to go to each agency. Probably, if there is a total subcontract and the subcontract takes responsibility and he will either take the burden out of the main contractor and he is well versed with the local area and he is well versed with the departments, the entire things he can take up and do the work. And that will really speed up the things. But local knowledge, and local acquaintance with the individual departments will be a yeah, plus point. So utility diversion, and you, you do any utility diversion, you need to barricade at that particular area. So that means if utility diversion is completed, that area is clear for doing the piles. Of course, meanwhile, the contractor will be doing the test piles. So the test pile is always done with the, again, same rig. Usually the rig is mobilized by the contractor from the other, from his other sides, but the testing, they always engage the local agency from Chennai city or other parts of the Tamil Nadu. In fact, a lot of agencies available in Chennai because a lot of projects people carry out in buildings also, this testing is a long procedure, I mean, regular procedure. So this also a lot of people who want to develop a testing system, they can enter into it. And pile testing, what I told is, the test done outside is a preliminary test to uh, know the, to ascertain the bearing capacity. And regular piling test is done on the working piles. That is the piles we are constructed and over it, which are going to construct the pier. Those piles also are randomly tested and the same testing agencies only invoice. And apart from that, there is also a lab test where they go for ultrasonic waves and that is also done for each pile. So testing is important factor. As I told, utility diversion, then you are testing. Then they lay the barricade. The barricading, you imagine, the 118 km meter, of course, it is combination of underground and viaduct. The barricade will be laid on the road. So you will see in Chennai, after one year, so many places you will see the barricades. That means, 
always chennai is a hub chennai or tamil nadu is a hub of fabrication very good place to take this borders and already experienced contractors those who are done phase 1 and phase 1 extension and they are already talking to the people so barricades are erected then piling rig is brought and they do piles and pile caps pile cap is a normal work where concrete reinforcement not much of specialization of course shuttering is there the shuttering is simple system because it is all going to be buried uh, so normal shuttering is only used then we raise the pier so for raising the pier you need a steel shutter with access tower and access not only access to a tower working platform on the top so here again the fabrication work is involved and any contractor let us say now for road punamalli we are having a stretch of 7 km he'll be doing this uh, pier number of piers simultaneously since more number of shutting is there so that means more structural seal and more fabrication then pier cap so you would have seen that whatever you are seeing the visually the figure it almost looks like phase one which is commissioned and it is every day you are noticing it or visualizing it but in phase two the pier cap is going to be different one major difference is in phase one it is done in situ here it is pre cast so i am comparing it the top most picture is is not exactly pier cap just to illustrate purpose, illustration purpose i am giving it the in situ pier cap that is work is done on site concrete is poured for which you need a steel structure or scaffolding and you need to wait for the concrete to gain strength for removing this structures now in phase 2 it is going to be a total pre cast and also it is a pre stress concrete that means when you say go for pre stressing the structure sections are reduced you will see how sleek it is compared to the other here of course the width is more because of the type of superstructure but the thickness are all very slim and this is going to save time at the same time this precast pier cap need a yard that means the yard has to be located and molds are to be placed as the units transport it in the long bed trailer bring it to site we can bring it only in the night hours and park the crane erecting you are seeing one crane is erecting there and uh, holding on pier cap so this is a major difference so pre costing is uh, given importance here to speed up the work and improve the quality here you will give a complete picture you saw in the uh, where your illustration there is a pier over that the pre cast pier cap and over that the super structure that is you are seeing it's uh, like a u shape actually it is a twin girders each twin is a u shape and this also introduced the first time and all these things already done for phase one extension for small stage the same thing is going to be adapted for the phase 2 and as like pier cap this u girder is also to be cast in the yard and you will see that length is to the span between two pier 25 meter 27 sometime it may go to 30 meter but normally it is a standard is 25 and this 25 meter unit is cast and loaded on the trailer and this is a special trailer hydraulic trailers for easy maneuvering and the hydraulic trailer will bring it to the site and this also can be done only in the night hours and crane can erect where road width is available crane will erect where road width is less there is a gantry over that you are see you are seeing the structure red color and that gantry will erect this you got us
So whatever components I explained about the pre-casting, you can look at the yard, how they are being cast. So you are having a longer length and there's the gantry to handle these units from the casting bed to the stacking, from stacking to trailer. The topmost is the pier cap, stacked. And uh, foreground, uh, you're not able to see, which is a casting. It's cast on the single mold. The very complicated mold because of the shape of the pier cap. Unfortunately, these molds are not so far tried in Chennai. All contractors all over India, depending on only two, three or maximum three or four. But regularly they are going for two vendors, Bombay and Pune. And this is going to determine the, in fact, casting cycle, or I mean the readiness of the casting yard, because you need to get the mold first, do trial casting, and then go for a regular casting. So that way it is very critical activity with respect to supplying of the mold. The another is the u gutter. The difference is that is a post-tension concrete where you apply pre-stressing after the concrete attains strength. These u gutters are pre-tension. So post-tension to pre-tension, it again reduces section, concrete section, very, very slender. You see how, what is the thickness of the u gutter the left side bottom most. And this u gutter is also cast on the steel bed, which you are seeing in the right bed. Right, right side, you are seeing that two blue color and bottom, a black, so that, that oil is supplied. So that means such a long length, the units, maybe three u gutters, four u gutters, or five u gutters are cast in one bed, one line. And left side, you are seeing where it is stacked. And this is uh, all consumes a longer time cycle because you are having a mold, ready the mold, readiness of the mold. And the reinforcement is not tied on the mold. It is brought as a cage and the gantry will lower it. So most of the things are mechanized, but still the time cycle varies from nine to 12 days, depending on the efficiency of the yard and the contract. So the u gutter is pre-tension, and each u gutter weighs 150 metric ton. So if it is to be erected, you need very high capacity of the crane, 250 ton, two numbers. So you can imagine when the, all the packages are there, how many cranes will be working here, how many trailers will be on fleet, the bigger, 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 resource mobilization is going to be involved. And the source is Chennai. I know Chennai, when I was working in Bangalore, most of the cranes we get from uh, Chennai. Because when we when were doing a project in Bangalore, there was, there was time, those days, only IT projects were famous. But when projects like this nature came, we always avail the facility of Chennai. Chennai was having larger cranes and large numbers. But now, everywhere crane, Everywhere metro projects taking place, we have to see who is having more cranes and whether we are going to get from other part of this uh, India. And even I was talking to one of my friend in Gulf. He was telling most of the missionaries lying idle. They are also having a fund crunch and so many other issues, pandemic and etc. Contactors and projects are all very low. The oil price also having a major impact. So I, I don't know how far that can be utilized in this place. So when demand raises, already always the solution comes. But those who want to grab the opportunity, you can think of various ways to support the project, to support the CMR, and to support the Chennai people. This I am repeating a slide that how the gantry, over at gantry, traveling over the erected span and the span to be erected, there's a gap in that the u gutter unit will be coming from the rear side, gantry will pick up and bring it forward and place it on the pier. 
and there is of course the bearing neoprene bearing in fact this bearing also they always depend on agencies bangalore and north india and the bearing has to be tested even the testing facility is not available i mean testing facility is available means you will be in queue a lot of testing will be going on so the gandri is located or gandri is used only places where there is a narrow road but still exact details like uh, other stages we don't know but lnt stage crane putting the crane and directing two tire not possible already in the tender drawing they have given they have shown other type of gantry it is like a push launcher and they are going to adapt and uh, this is of course tender what lnt is going to propose we see but one thing i can say if this gantry is going to come there also this type of gantry again huge fabrication huge amount it's a very big girders actually what you are seeing is a box steel box is made of steel plates and somebody can make a truss it all depends on the designer so now we have to see what type of gantry they are going to install and where we are going to they are going to fabricate who is going to design everything is involved definitely fabrication biggest work is there the next is testing the gantry testing agency we get from again north india or delhi where so many metros are there testing agencies are established they come and do the load test and uh, they apply the load whatever uh, designer wanted and tested physically proved and then it is commissioned so far we talked about the viaduct so viaduct is to carry the train but station is the location where people use the buildings how station building is constructed there is a big difference that there are a lot of precast components are shown but here we are also precast components where possible city like mumbai like i was showing pier cab here also they were tried but in our project in phase 2 how people are going what proposal we are to see about it but i could see that there so far it is only in situ in photo what you are seeing is a phase one extension and this is most likely going to repeat or if they are going to change precast going to be very good for the project so it is a cantilever arm from the concession point of view i was telling about precast in situ but another thing you will notice in phase one where was this arm this was not a cantilever arm it was a simply supported slab the arm extends and it rests on the column the columns are coming in the service roads or footpath side like a portal frame now it is a cantilever that means land acquisition is very much reduced so it is only on the top you have to work bottom there is a trapping within the road width so the arm is cast cantilever arm is cast further they have tried to implement precast and now phase 2 also is cast you could see in the top photographs if the cantilever arm is cast they put this precast beams here i would like to implement the precast beams is not that complicated as u gutter or air cap is a normal precast beams and today this kind of a beams or slabs tamil nadu has really given an example to other place other states and so many buildings are now done in precast and uh, i think people will be aware of the there is one textile retail company i think kothis they are buildings always done entirely precast so in fact we also approached about three or two projects for uh, expediting our schedule and they have also shown interest but the time was very late so those who are interested to have their own precasting system they, they are already developed a precasting yard and they want to use it these are the area which is easier to get the design uh, i mean design is already done get the scheme and support the contractor uh, erection also the, it is not that way heavy like you got it so you can have normal 40 ton crane or 80 ton crane you can erect it and this beams are all placed over the beams 
we put a shuttering and uh, these shutterings are not supported from the ground because traffic is always going. We adapted some methods where it is all come on the beam itself and slab is cast. And after casting the slab, we go up in situ and cast the platform slab. So the platform slab also, again, in situ, you are seeing the photo given the bottom, the something projecting vertically up, that is a platform. The columns are to carry the platform slab. So this is the concrete structure frame, what we saw so far, viaduct, viaduct uh, pile cap, pile spile cap, pier, then pier cap, and station building, a uh, different type of pier, in situ pier cap, then slab, uh, the beams and slab, beams are precast. And in fact, one company, in Trivetu, they say, tried even the slab as a precast. And that also can be explored. But only thing, all whatever you want to do it, the main contractor, main, with the initiative of the main contractor and with the subcontractor, the project can be taken now itself in the planning stage and make it success. Uh, I got a couple of videos we don't want to show now. We'll go through the other parts of the slide and come back. The video is nothing but one is for the viaduct, which I was uninvolved, and I explained also the first video. The same thing, you will see the animation, how it is done from pile cap to pier cap. Second video is about the underground tunneling. So both the videos, uh, or will explain uh, very clearly that how it is constructed. We'll come back to this video later. So tools and techniques. Why I'm highlighting here that in phase two, unlike phase one extension, there's a scheduling software made it compulsory that each contracting company should be equipped with Primavera software. So Primavera software is actually, Primavera is a US company and recently it has been uh, taken over by Oracle and Oracle is further developed this Primavera into so many modules, even they have gone up to the ERP level. So Primavera software is a must. And when you say software is necessary means there should be trained persons to operate this or use this software and the trained person who is exposed to type of metro project. So this, with these combinations, the primera have to be used. And what for it is used? It is for the scheduling. A lot of people would add MS project which is very familiar in IT field and very familiar with most of the companies now. Even a company like C category or category three, very common to see that engineers using MS project. Primavera is a versatile software. We'll come to Beam later, Primavera will tell. It is a, like MS project, it is coded based on the critical path analysis. Critical path analysis, all we would have read in our syllabus one of the management syllabus, construction management. And based on the critical path analysis, this primary is used and it is very widely used in oil and gas fields in Gulf countries. And now metro projects in India, I think 70 to 80% is a compulsory. So, why I'm talking so much length about this, there is the big opportunity that so many stretches are going to come and uh, software companies can take this primer of P6 from Oracle, the approved vendor, because primer of P6 installation also need a special people. I, I only talked about the persons who is going to use the software like planning engineer, training engineer, but it's, uh, implementation is another thing which only software people can do it. So that means who is authorized, who is approved vendor of the Oracle, they can supply this software. And I think it is mandated to supply same software to 
border house, I mean the Chennai Metro, and probably to the consultant. And it is not a cheap software like MS project. I think it costs around three to five lakhs and more and more add-ons, it will the cost will increase. So this tool is widely going to be used. As I told, it is based on the critical path analysis which we studied in the college. The critical path is nothing but the longest path. So along the longest path, any activity you delay by one day, the project will be delayed by one day. Uh, when you look at the schedule, this is a typical a schedule sheet created in primary. Your schedule is created and the input, data input is given. Those who studied thoroughly about the contract document, those who studied the drawings, those who interacted with the construction team, and those who interacted with the vendors, you'll be knowing the duration of each activity. You can estimate the duration because you cannot go on assumption. It has to be discussed. It's a, it's again a long process, but long process means it should not go parallel to the shade, I mean the concession. So that's why CMR insists that there is a milestone. Within this milestone, this schedule has to be made and submitted approval so that this is going to be the basis for doing the project. So this is an important tool and it's a good area for opportunity. And we don't want to explain much more about the primary. This is another class. But this tool is also used for the contractor as well as the client to evaluate any delays occurred in the contract or the project. And if the delays is due to the third party or a design, the owner will engage the consent or will discuss with the consultant. And he will use this tool, actual versus, sorry, planned versus actual, and where the delays are, this can pinpoint the delays, where exactly. That means the schedule creation is such a way that you include all activities, then it will pinpoint also the delays. For example, utilities, none of the uh, people can influence. Sometimes it takes their time. There are a lot of procedural things. So those are utilities are also when you put it in schedule, one, it helps you to monitor the schedule. One other thing, it helps you to analyze where things went wrong. And it's going to be feedback for that contractor or that consultant or even for that agency, whether uh, TNEB or Tangeru or Metro Water. So that in other sectors, we take corrective action in the well in advance. So we talked about primavera. The next is a building information modeling. I just took one line from Hindu. It came as a big news in January. So he talks about, he didn't mention the word theme anywhere, but what he means was CMR launched for 3D modeling before taking up the phase two work. And definitely, what he has brought is happening. Each contract has been told, and it is specified in the contract book that they are going to adopt DD. So all contractors should be equipped, and consultants also getting a full equipped. And 3D modeling only will be the platform for the contractor to work on it. This is something more sophisticated than AutoCAD. In AutoCAD, when AutoCAD came, you have seen that all the companies started using AutoCAD, but it was simple to capture and a lot of uh, training centers were there. Even uh, some companies have become very famous by saying CAD center, but so far, no, still a lot of BIM companies are there, but training centers are not much. So 3D modeling is a BIM. The benefits it gives, is it brings in all the discipline like architectural information, structural information, and MEP information in one platform. And any changes you make, or you mean say architect makes any changes, so it immediately captured by 
just a third person. So this I am talking about the initial creation of the design. Not only that, when you complete your design and when you are reviewing it, there may be some changes due to so many reasons, vendor, client, or maybe contractor. And when you make changes, that changes will be captured and all people will be able to see. This is a major advantage. And second is, because you are able to see everything, if there are any clashes between the services, it is identified in a quicker way and solution is brought at the platform and it is escalated to the concerned agencies and resolve it. We, we call it as a, there is a sector called interface engineers. So interface engineers will take the responsibility of solving it. So when I say so many words, you will see in CMRL, there is list of people whom they are telling that those people to be recruited with the Metro exposures, which normally these people are not NHA projects or any other projects of similar nature, you will not be finding it. But here, these posts are very important. They call it as a key post. So in Metro, interface manager is a key post and you should come in the very first day and start interacting with that. So with the interface manager, with the beam, the problems are solved well in advance before even work starts. And mostly this is uh, very uh, important for station building and also tunnels. Viaduct is not much there. So now piling is going on means, okay, parallelly there, which I am also, I have seen a lot of contractors, they already floated inquiries about the 3D, they are recruiting the people. But definitely all people will be able to catch up. But business point of view, 3D modeling, one, Chennai, there are so many companies, they are supporting Gulf countries, they are supporting developed countries. That means when Metro Rail comes, the agencies can get added, they can support it like off-site work, or maybe it may be on-site within their office. It's a big scope and once and definitely government will take this beam modeling in so many other projects. For example, in Nandam uh, there is one exhibition, all they are building it. When I visited, I saw it is almost like a station building, so many utilities and structural steel, then pump house, but still or a beam is not there, but it's going to catch up so fast that that will be a big vacuum shortage and it is now people have to capture this opportunity and so that the projects are all completed on time the contractor gets full support from the local. See all these contractors who come and work in Chennai except LNT, they all come from other places, Calcutta, Delhi, Bombay. So when they come here, definitely they look local, they can take support from local or the locals, we approach them, we are here, we will support you. And that approach will be win-win situation. So, so far we talked about uh, the structures, wider structures. And uh, we also could see that these are the areas, yes, I can enter here. But up, uh, I made a summary where the opportunities can be explored. The first item is the heavy items, fire rigs, heavy cranes. I told heavy cranes are required for piling, for pier, for precast cap erection, precast yoga directions and so many other miscellaneous activities. So where we are going to land? Are we having so many cranes? Of course, contractors definitely have their own plan because when they quoted, definitely they are having plans. But people who are equipped with uh, this facility or those who are planning, definitely they can take advantage of this item. Normally in Delhi, 
Delhi Metro, there are very popular agencies. Just they give a phone call. I got preparing so many beams, then you will give you a report. I think within three weeks, you'll be finalized. And you'll be having so many several agencies like that because the, the CMR is centered into phase four. So in phase four, so many 20 years, definitely they have grown up. So Chennai also should do that. Probably at least in the piling rigs, if not heavy claims. Next to small, small equipments, but in large quantities. Excavator. It is uh, starting from the, what you call the uh, piling, pile cap. Then station building. Uh, we are not shown in the slides. There is a exit structure. You approach the station using staircase, then escalators. And there is a sum. All these places, these three equipments are used because that is of a minor nature, like other building. You don't need heavy equipments. And these are required in a huge numbers. And uh, any stretch given, let us say that Pundamali Poru, if people are taking a ball station simultaneously for the stretch itself, we need to employ at least 50% of station is equipments. And JCB Hydra is not such a specialist equipment. It is already available. One important thing is that has to be fit for use. The fit for use certificate has to be obtained from a agency. It is authorized by safety auditor or safety engineer or even safety model safety team. It is all covered in the specification. Just like that, you cannot bring one equipment. The contact also uh, approved your equipment. I mean, your rate and everything finalized. You can't first day itself bring the crane. So that means you need to make this crane field from safety point of view. And those things have to be understood well in advance. So, so that uh, there is no delay taking place even after having the equipment. And it applies for all the equipment, all the missionaries. Particularly heavy cranes are all much, much the rigorous screening will be happening. And I only told about the screening for the equipment. Even the operator, special licenses are required. And those are to be obtained. And then definitely they can be used. The one item I mentioned in the second row, material self-handling truck. There are so many trade names for that. For uh, easy understanding, I put the name, but the photograph is shown here. So here, the advantage is the crane path. It, it is sitting on the track itself. I mean the trailer body. So when you park the trailer, there is no separate crane and uh, there is a separate space for the trailer. And already when you are working on the narrow road, handling small materials, this is very handy. And this is not much uh, seen in the regular usage. Of course, here what you are seeing is uh, in Western countries, very, very common. But still, it is not catching the eyes of all the other, other sectors. I mean, not only this construction, or maybe I have not noticed. So this uh, proposal, if we put it, definitely it will work. And I think one company, uh, if his name is unique, and they are already manufacturing in India. But uh, which are the places, how many vendors got it developed? Uh, because I used it some six or seven years back. So more manufacturing would have been there. But people from here, we can flow 10 queries. And these cranes can be of very much useful. And it's again tire mounted. We can work it very nicely, easily, safely. Then long bed trailers to carry the pre-cost items. And hydraulic trailers. As I told that uh, the u gutter has to come in hydraulic trailers, which is having a good maneuvering facilities and uh, it is having all safety measures for turning everything. But very expensive trailers. And the contractor, if he's doing a stretch, he's bringing one unit and that unit is going to be picked up that means there should be another trailer which should be on the way. 
So in one location itself, we will be requiring two trailers. So it all depends on the planning, how much trailers you will be employing for each stage. And you multiply it with the number of packages and then make it parallel work. How many places, what will be going parallel and that many trailers will be going to be employed. So are we having in Chennai these trailers? But even for our uh, derivative project where we used Ugada, uh, we brought these trailers from other states only. And uh, it was given on a contract basis. And uh, of course, uh, one person, one mechanic was supporting all the time so that there is no breakdown. This hydraulic jacks is a minor item. And the uh, jacks are all, I think, will be available. Then the uh, item is small. There is man lift crane, but it is much in demand. Uh, because you know that once air goes up and you are working at the highest place from the road, the person to reach to see minor inspection, or he has to just put one hoop or one bearing, then this is ideal equipment. Uh, it is safe also because it is all certified by international authorities. That's why it has come here. On Chennai, it is, uh, we have seen, we have mobilized uh, more than six. But project of this nature, you can imagine how many such cranes are required and uh, how many operators who know this job, how they have to do it. And of course, they have to line up with the maintenance. And compressors, it is used in all kind of waste manufacturing and automobile. And the construction side also, it is required. DG sets, because all the work is going to be 24 hours. And the open ground, definitely will not be availing the electricity from the PNEP because there are so many other procedures are there. But in casting yard, yes, you will be availing the things from the uh, directly PNEP. But there also you will be having a DG sets. When you avail from casting yard here also, I told you a lot of construction company who come from North India, they are not familiar with the procedure of approvals, though they will be uh, definitely holding people. But the agencies who are much familiar that, okay, I will take this uh, responsibility, I will install my transformer, I will even make engineering. These are the transformer and these are the panels. Everything you can line up and you can get a proposal and get it approved and you can be part of the contractor list. So that possibility we can always support. Of course, DG sets are required a standby for casting out also and for site also. This three, now bottom three, bottom two are very common. The concrete batching plant, the contractor will be having his own plant in his yard. The contractors, sometimes they operate in two type of model. He transfers the equipment from his other sites or he gives lease to somebody who, will, who are owning the equipment, they bring it, install it, operate it, then he will take his back. And that model we have seen, in fact, I personally worked in another part of India where the vendor brought everything, batching plant, transmitter, concrete pump. And there's a team of mechanics. Whole responsibility he takes, and that means the burden on the contractor is relieved. So contractor concentrates on the, his main activity. Of course, this all depends on the senior management and HO policy. And this time I'm bringing to the knowledge, yes, there is a possibility and we can explore it. Even the you know that the time, speed, and everything, when you're seeing it, the policy may be relaxed. So right time to approach it. But operating this batching plant, transit mixture, again, need a lot of uh, procedural approval. For example, batching plant, you need to approve uh, pollution control board. There should be clearance. And transit mixture, like any other equipment, road authority has to approve, police, everybody. So the pollution control approval is again a procedure. If anybody is having a 
contact with the pollution agency, they can help the main contract. This whatever, whatever I'm telling it is all service type of business or service type of opportunities. The third one, we just think about it because when I worked in so many projects, the concrete is dispatched from the yard based on the request given by the site engineer. And he estimates out by his drawing. And of course, basically he'll verify his, with all the calculation he does, even then you will end up with waste in the concrete. And it is dumped in. Either in the place where nobody sees me, it will be dumped on the end, end of the road or in the end of the edge of the casting yard. So like that, you will be seeing the big debris piling up. I have seen a lot of equipments are available for recycling it. So that means the green concrete, once it is, people say enough and you can't use anywhere within the permanent structure or even temporary structures, no scope that, that day, you, we supply this concrete to this recycling machine. They recycle it and so that you recover at least 60% of the, or this is only my guest figure, and he recovers. So this add value to the contractor. This business is really important for environmental point of also. As a matter of fact, all this project work, they need to get a green building certificate and what procedure you adopt in construction is to be highlighted or to be given as a report to the certification agency and he is convinced and then contractor gets certificates which is again final, finally it goes to the CMRL and the CMRL it is making it a mandatory to get the certificate. So probably this kind of recycling mission it not only helps to get certificate, you are uh, saving money also. And recycled material, how you can use it, that also can be given as second thought with the help of uh, consultants and your own team of engineers. So this, whatever I highlighted the equipments, the other one I have, I have not touched upon is launching gantry, which is highly special equipment, just custom made. And this probably, it is going to be already people are lined up. This, this equipment nobody can afford to start planning now and get get to date. It is in planning stage, might have gone now, maybe turning stage. But fabrication part, people can still try because those who are having a yard, bigger yard, they're having all details designed. Maybe fabrication they can source it to local place. Now, we talked about the service that is supply of missionaries. Another service sector, I told about the software and other things. The, you can even uh, having a manpower supply. When I say manpower supply means it may be any kind of the project nature. You've seen the type of constructions. The only thing, when you go to top level, engineers or managers, they should have got exposure to Metro, but otherwise, this service is also can be. In fact, uh, recently, when we are talking to one of the contractors, they are they are given a list. These are the engineers we want. So that opportunity always can be explored. Now, vendors, bulk materials, cement and aggregates. Cement is now a batching plant means cement comes in the silos. Uh, I mean, pump to silos. So you need a transport facility and that there are a lot of uh, transport fleets who are having their own vehicle. And cement agencies are there. And, but all these companies, they prefer to have a tie-up. They even open a BG and take or give orders. But aggregates, it has to come from local pressure, and those who operate the crusher are the supplier who is in between these two. And he takes this aggregates, get it tested. I mean, testing will be done, of course, by contractor. 
and if it is found suitable the aggregates are also supplied to various contractors and this can be got up because the aggregate says earlier all is natural sand now natural sand is difficult to get so we are having a modified robo sand we call or uh, this is actually we are exploring a new equipment we can install that equipment with this sand only thing the specification have to be met and definitely you have to go through the testing procedures if not possible you can get it vetted with the iit or other engineering colleges so coarse aggregate fine aggregate cement and of course admixture that can be gas so what are the admixture companies approved earlier only mnc multinational companies were there and last one decade there are so many companies are manufacturing these admixtures and chemical companies uh, particularly in kolkata is a very big uh, local company they are manufacturing aggregate and water proofing compounds so how far we are equipped in tamil nadu we have to see and that can be lined up but all this to be done very fast manner because the concrete has to be designed the design should be based on this bulk material type of bulk material and now is the time to do that rmc the ready mix concrete which i told uh, other option of uh, own batching plant so we avail this facility for trivertu one batching plant is available there nearby we got it approved we have been using it in the initial stage till the batching plant is established and he become a stand by supplier so each company there may be a model that this is my only one batching plant i am going to have a stand by batching plant side by side from the local areas which are very near to the site so pre cast products i mentioned about the beams and though the photograph shows beam and if we go entirely go through all the drawings we can pick up so many other pre cast items and these are all small items can be cast in your own yard transported and install it and this big scope is available and when you think pre cast means the contractor likes it the client likes it because it makes us faster only thing we have to meet her all the specifications and your logistic and your other if any any opportunity is there you have to resolve that the third item rebar of course limited companies are only approved i mean reputed companies and these reputed companies definitely having agency and this has been going for a decade that the yards are built up for the first phase quantities are plenty but we end up sometime short term particular day for suppose we found in bangalore ready made steel yard ready made steel manufacturing facility tata has established we tied up with the tata we are the first agency to take it tied up when i was working there the advantage we avail the tata will be having surplus stock or bulk stock of all the diameters all sections the stocks whenever it is running out consumed it will be replenished on high priority compared to the local agencies or their own other channel of supply so that means you never feel the shortfall materials always comes work always goes on work not stopped due to particular shortage second when i say ready made he got a huge machine which he cuts and bends i mean the machine cuts and bends as per the schedule picked up from the drawing or prepared by the contractor or the consultant and the schedule is given to them and they upload it in the software and the software digitized the operation of steel helps you to get the bar so quickly that what you produce seven days with your uh, usual time of working hours and uh, usual up and down of labor strength these people will produce maybe in one or two days 
and you, of course you have the lineup catch hold of them now itself. But unfortunately, a ready-made steel yard, a ready-made steel manufacturing facility is very much limited in Chennai. Tata Steel, I, when I approached Tata Steel, they told yes, yes, we are having, but later we kept, you know, they are tied up with person who was already having a yard. And we had a lot of problem. Uh, now what is the new development? I don't know whether they're going to set up a factory. But uh, one week back, I was talking to one company in Singapore who is uh, having a diverse uh, business, right from uh, diaphragm wall riggers, piling, then other machineries. They are going to enter into this business because in Singapore is very common. In Singapore, you get a lot of such facilities, such companies. A lot of companies are owned by Chinese. Lot some other companies like Indians are also holding it, they owning it. So probably that person is already made up his mind. Very soon he is going to find a place and import the machine. He is going to set up the yard for probably the it is going to come very soon for the metro project when it is finished, when it is started now or maybe 20 percent over. So when one person comes also may not be sufficient because the limited resource, what he is having, the shed is there, machine is there, but still you have to see what uh, for storage facility, everything. I think there are places, there are companies, we can approach them who make this machine. Even some machines are available in uh, second hand. And ready-made steel is helpful to the contractor. As I told, one is time saving. Second, he is uh, buying directly from the manufacturers like Tata Steel or RANL. He st stocks it in the yard with a big inventory on his financial book. He cuts and bends, which he needs another area. So, so far I was showing so many slides, you would have thought where from, where from all this area is available for the contractor who is coming fresh and landing in Chennai. And they search for land for this solve the requirements. One is the pre-costing of you got a pre-costing of air cap, and there are some other gutters are available apart from whatever you have seen station. And certain pre-cost and more items if you are converting from in city. So pre-costing stacking is going to cover more area. Apart from that, we're going to cover area for cage, ready-made cage. Then you should be having an area for cutting, bending time, which means you need a very big land. So that land parcel getting in Chennai, we are here to see how all contracts are coming up. I have seen KEC already that's successful. Tata, still they are trying for lands. The LNT exactly, you know, they might have located it. So, so many more contractors are going to come. This ready-made steel will help the contractor that the steel is dispatched directly to the location where it is going to be used. Like casting armies, you can come and dump it in the cage building. If it is in the site, it is going to be built near the Pier locations, cut and bends are dumped, or maybe put in a trailer or put in a platform. So ready-made steel is going to be very popular, not for this alone, metro alone, any projects. I think there are projects of similar nature. Is being planned. Every day you will see newspaper today, you will say that highway department declaring that these are the projects we are going to do in Chennai. These are the projects we are going to do in whole Tamil Nadu. And I am sure, I have been watching last uh, seven years, when you interact with the people, whatever you are seeing announcement, if we go inside the drawing room, you will see a lot of projects on drawing board. All are very wonderful projects, still it has to come out. And these projects are similar nature to this metro. See, when I say metro rail projects, it's only for user point of view, we are talking that it is 
going to carry the metro train. Otherwise, it is a project of the flyover of long length or elevated eye of long length. But the way it is constructed, the way it is controlled with respect to safety, quality, the environmental factors, and the employment of very highly experienced professional who have got international exposure, that makes, of course, little difference where other departments are going, is going to catch up with them. And structural steel, similarly, as I told, a lot of applications are involved for temporary sector, like uh, gantry, then we are having a shuttering plate, then we are having a sheet pipe. So those are the areas structural steel is prepared. And structural steel, permanent structure is also there, mostly in the underground, also in biotech, but they're all in small sections. But here, people who are able to catch the structural steel, as I told, other areas like highways, there is a news even I was told, the government is thinking to make the flyover super city entirely with the structural steel. Of course, not entirely, certain location due to some reasons. And this is already in use in so many places. I think UP and Northeast places and even in Delhi. In Delhi, the structural steel is there for the highway as well as metro train. And if you want to see the structural steel in metro train, people who cross the Gindi station from airport to Tenebaj, right side you will see the bridge, the train crossing the railway crossing and a huge span of structural steel. So those kind of structural steel also going to come near Poro, which is going to consume more than 400 metric tons. That is a permanent one. So that kind of uh, structural steel, then if government is going to adopt structural steel superstructure, and definitely we can get prepared. And here, structural steel, we got two areas. One is three areas, you can say design. Some design, of course, we get from client. Uh, another thing we, we want to say that any design we get from consultant, it has to be studied by contractor. He may be having a metro experience designer with him, and he will study the constructability. And then only he will start, he will say that, okay, this is okay for me, I will proceed with that. Or he says he's not okay for me, with the approval of CMR and consultant, for some reason, valid reason, it will get revised. So that means structural steel also same way. The design team, then you're having a shop drawing, then you're having a manufacturing or a fabricating, then direction. So these many areas, local, suppliers, local fabricator, local subcontractor can support. And HD stands, I just skip it. HD stands is nothing but, I told uh, the peer cap is priestess concrete. You got a, the superstructure is priestess concrete. So these are priestess for which you use HD stands. And this material, there are only limited number of suppliers. And uh, of course, these are, Items, there's much, uh, you cannot have any value addition or uh, any scope. This can be directly coming from the manufacturer and we use it. Of course, this only, we do certain testing. In the testing laboratory, people use IIT or other labs. Even rebar also, we do testings. Then building materials, tiles, railings, and whatever building materials you see in a, airport station or the commercial building is going to come here. Only the finished nature, workmanship, expectation will be very high. And the procedure for submitting these materials with your uh, catalog, color codes, all, if it is done earlier, even the persons who is not in the approval age, or who is in the verge of approval, they can catch up very fast. If you follow all the procedure, maybe now it is too early, but we can catch up maybe after one or two months. 
All these materials are required. You have seen how many number of stations. These stations require same time. That many materials are to be made available. And uh, coming to the railings, it is all actually it is a part of the fabrication items. So this definitely we can have it in our fabrication yard and supply it. Then waterproofing. Waterproofing is a product where we apply concrete structures below ground level to protect the concrete from the chlorine and other chemical uh, materials, chemical chemicals. So waterproofing material is again brought from North India. And of course, now it is available here also. If more people are having any new waterproofing product or who are having uh, experience of using it in Gulf, because in Gulf it is widely used. It is come in uh, self-sticking. You just uh, remove the paper, stick it in the wall. So, so many type of products. If you're already having a tie-up or you can make a new tie-up and propose it, the specification is always available. And of course, you need a good applicator. The product who supplies, if he's having a, like he's having a product tie-up, he can have an applicator tie-up who applies it. Why it is? All waterproofing needs to be guaranteed. It's like any Indian government projects. The, you have to give a guarantee. So that's why you have to be very careful in choosing the material and using it and applying it can be seen. And uh, there are certain other materials which are not covered like water stop, expansion joint, and some other decorative materials, but there's all the small items. But waterproofing is a big item because the structures, some structures are very big. Roofing sheet, each stations, you have seen the roof already, which is having high profile sheet of galvo aluminum, but the structure below is a PEB. This again comes under the structural steel. And this structural steel, PEB, and roofing sheets can be sourced in Tamil Nadu. And uh, I think we could see that a lot of people are there and already being tied up. Anybody wants to tie up new, plenty of scopes so over there. As I told, there are plenty of stations. So now I'll go to the video and try to play that. We can make it full screen, sir. Stages for elevated viaducts and stations along the median of the existing carriageway. The construction work will start with the relocation of existing utilities along the road median, as well as the road shoulder, to facilitate pavement widening work. Barriers with hoarding will be installed to prevent debris from getting into the roadway and also to avoid distraction of the passing motorist, ensuring safety of the road users. To minimize disruption and inconvenience to the road user, a comprehensive traffic management scheme will be implemented in each work zone. Existing carriageway will be widened to compensate for space being taken for construction work through <laughs> medians, ensuring existing number of traffic lanes is maintained and minimizing disruption of traffic flow. Traffic will be diverted safely to the newly widened pavement and the space at road median will be barricaded and separated from the public.
The construction of viaduct and station structures will begin with the commencement of foundation structures. Steel sheet pile will be installed before excavation work and construction of pile cap to ensure stability of the adjacent road pavement and the safety of road user. Advanced climbing system form work will be used for the construction of piers. This will shorten construction time, minimize disruption and inconvenience to the road user. Once the pier construction is completed, the area will be cleaned and cleared off construction debris and reinstated for traffic use. The station concourse will be supported by precast crosshead launched and installed in position by cranes delivered to site from designated casting yard off site. The project is using as much as applicable precast method of construction to shorten the construction time and minimizing inconvenience to the public. For crosshead launching, Additional traffic lanes need to be closed for bigger workspace required for the cranes and trailers. This will be accomplished during night work when additional traffic lanes can be closed with minimum disruption to road users. The viaducts are built with precast segmental box girder delivered to site by trailer and launched in position by an overhead launcher during night work when additional lanes closing possible. Roads adjacent to work zones will be well lit to provide clear guides and directions for motorists passing through the work zones. The station concourse is built with precast beam supported by crosshead. Precast beams delivered to site by trailers from designated casting yard are launched onto the supporting crosshead by cranes. As a safety precaution, the soffit of the completed span of precast beams will be installed with safety netting to prevent any possible construction debris falling onto live traffic passing through underneath. The traffic flow is reinstated as before. The concourse level slab will be cast with concrete delivered by concrete mixer trucks from a fruit batching plant and placed in position by concrete pump trucks. Further station construction activities continue above concourse level with traffic safely flowing underneath. Construction of elevated station continues till completion without further disruption to traffic flow. So we can make it full screen, sir. Yeah. Dublin Metro Tunnel Construction Sequence. This short video explains the sequence to construct the Metro Tunnel. Prior to tunneling, a pit or underground station is constructed in which the tunnel boring machine can be assembled. A reception pit or station has to be constructed to a stage where the tunnel boring machine can pass through it or be recovered. When the tunnel boring machine arrives, the tunnel boring machine, also known as a TBM, excavates the ground by the rotating head and then places precast wall segments to form rings that in turn form the tunnel walls. Precast wall segments are transported on mine wagons through the completed tunnel to the back of the TBM. 
The excavated material is transported on conveyor belts to a station and lifted to ground level by skip and crane from where it is transported off-site by tipper lorries. The tunnel fit-out comprises constructing the tunnel floor, drainage, installation of track, wall brackets, tunnel ventilation, high voltage power, signaling, communications and overhead line equipment. Commissioning involves running trains to ensure the operational systems are functioning correctly. Following are some video clips from various projects. With its rotating cutting wheel, the tunneling machine breaks the material from the tunnel face. The material is then transferred to the belt conveyor system in the rear of the shield via a screw conveyor, while the hydraulic cylinders press the machine forward continuously. The reinforced concrete segments, known as lining segments, are installed under the protection of the shield skin. When the ring building has been completed, the machine can push itself against the new tunnel ring and drill further into the soil. Please like, share, and subscribe. So the two videos are representative and may not be exactly what procedure we are going to adopt. For example, they show the beer cap is in because this is done in some other cities. So here we are able to see. So far, I think the documents are ready since two years. And the uh, superstructure, as I told, they changed from phase one to phase two. It is Yugada. And uh, Yugada precaution is more challenging than the boss gutter, but the erection is very fast. So it is concluded like this with all the efforts when Metro is put into use, you can see the difference. How once metro people yeah, suffer rushing into the train, and here even a baby is sitting comfortably. So this is the biggest achievement of engineers and all contributors. And uh, shall we start the question hour? Yes, sir. One second, sir. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Bashim, sir, for a very comprehensive presentation. In fact, uh, <clears throat> you have. Uh, highlighted the opportunities and potential available in a very spellbounding manner. It was a great value presentation today and uh, hope uh, there are several takeaways for all the participants today. I, I, I only wish that uh, all, of, all of us could properly utilize the resources and uh, utilize the opportunities and potential that has been uh, thrown open by you, sir. So now we can proceed to the question and answer sessions. Participants, you can just unmute and ask your questions. Sir, can we Everybody stop the... Can please unmute and ask your questions. 
Sir, can we stop the screen share, uh, sir? Bashim, sir. Uh -huh. Uh, Obi, sir, can I ask a question? Ah, please, please go ahead. Please go ahead, Shura. Yeah. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, good morning, Bashim, sir. It was a very useful presentation. And uh, it was, uh, I mean, you highlighted also about the opportunities. It was a great session. I have one question, sir. You said yeah. about this 3D modeling software. Um, so this 3D modeling software, what uh, software, sir? Like, is it uh, AutoCAD 3D or PDS, PDMS? Uh, what is the software version? Okay. Okay. What I'm referring to is AutoCAD Rebater. AutoCAD Rebater, OK. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the Thanks. Thanks, thanks for the question.